Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm really excited to give you a walkthrough of Anno 1800, a game that's been designed by Martin Wallace. So yeah, really, really great names, great theme and I must say really a great game. A little a warning up front, uh, Cosmos kindly provided me a review copy of this game, so take everything I say with a pinch of salt, but I really do like the game. I'm pretty sure I will not be able to give you a full playthrough of the game, so rather I decided to go with a three-player walkthrough. It works perfectly well with two players, but honestly I think it's definitely the better experience with three or four players just because of the whole trading aspect of the game. Not saying you're not trading in a two-player game but I think you trade even more in a three or four player game or you really have to trade even more in a three or four player game. So yeah, I think with that being said, let's get into the game. As usual, I really not spend a lot of time explaining you the rules. And that's pretty much the main game board that you see here with a lot of uh, industries. Uh, each of those industries comes with two tiles and that's really the limit that you can have and it, it doesn't change. It's the same amount if you're playing with a two, three or four player. It's always two of those industries. The one difference or the one exception to that are those shipyards up there and also the ships themselves. You really need ships in this game. At least usually you want to have a lot of those ships. Not really a lot, but definitely more than just one or two on your player board. At least uh, the, the longer you play. And this is the one piece which, I don't know, the game is really long. Um, the Box says, I think, 120 minutes. Um, I don't know, maybe in a two-player game that can be feasible. If you really know the game well, then yes, I think that's possible. In three to four players, I think it's better part of three hours, I would say, sometimes even a little bit longer. But again, depends a little bit on your analysis paralysis and how well you know the game. Additionally, you have to bear with me, I have the German version of the game with the German rules, so I'm pretty sure I may use some improper translations for some of those components. Again, I will try to do the best I can to make it sense, And but again, the later version of the English or the English version of the game might use different terms that I am doing my uh, little walkthrough here. But I think you should be fine. And I think, again, given that, let's really dive into the gameplay. But maybe before we do, let's, like, let's have a look at these order cards. This is something that you really draw at random at the start of each game. And there's really a whole pile of different cards. So this makes the game or each game so unique from session to session because again given the combination of cards given the combination of your specialist card that you will get as part of setup and also that you will draw later on the game really feels very very different each time you play there is uh, i think a recommended way on which cards you use for your first session or so in this case you can that's perfectly fine and i think you should use those because they seem to be relatively straightforward and simply help you to get into the game. But in this game, um, most of those cards are end game scoring bonuses, not all of those. Um, this one here, for example, Alonso Grace, he gives you an extra a turn once you trigger him. So when you spend three of these exploration tokens and three gold, you immediately get to take a second turn. Um, that's definitely important. You can only use it once per, per your turn, but still very, very powerful. Uh, Madame Kahina here, she basically gives you 10 points at the end of the game if you happen to have most of those trade tokens here. This is also not an endgame scoring one, that's an immediate thing that you can do. Our hunt here, so you can exhaust one of your investors here to immediately gain three gold um, gold nuggets, gold gold bars, sorry. Uh, here we have the University, Universität in German, um, also gives you 10 points at the end of the game if you happen to have the most of the engineers. Second place gets four and this is, I think, completely friendly ties. And here we have Karl Lennart von Malching. He gives you six points for each of those industries that you have at the end of the game. So for example, coffee, chocolate, cigars, and I think this might be wine. Those are pretty much the industries that you need to have in order to score him. It will and most likely or may happen in the game that you build something and then later on you have to get rid of it just to make room or because you no longer need it. 
for example, but especially those, um, let's say, higher scoring ones. And depending on which of those uh, mission or, or, or contract cards are out there, you may want to hold on to those or not. Um, I think that's that in respect to endgame victory points. On top of this, you will most likely score the majority of your points with your population cards here. They all come with three, five or eight points here at the bottom. Of course, you first have to play them. In order to play them, you have to get the resources that are printed on them. They all come with some special effects once they are played, which you can use once per, uh, once per yeah, basically once per turn. But it doesn't really matter if you activate it or not. Once you played the card like this, they will grant you three victory points in this case at the end of the game. And speaking about the end of the game, this is getting triggered once one player has played their last last card from their hand to the way. Then you complete the round and then you play another full round and then that's pretty much game over. The thing is, throughout the game, you will draw a hell of a lot of additional cards um, into your hand. And that's basically, oh, that's the reason why sometimes it really takes quite long for you to really end the game, because that's the only end of game trigger. I already have seen some recommendations on the geek who speak about this game length also, where they say, yeah, you might as well, whatever, set a timer, two hours, and then you say, we complete another one or two rounds, and then we call it. Works perfectly well. We actually tried that also for our very first playthrough and it worked okay. Of course, sometimes some of the engines are kicking off a little bit slower than that, so those <clears throat> people might be, I think, in a disadvantage, but overall, it I think it still works for your first sessions or so. Apart from that, it's really kind of an epic game, but it's an epic game that flows so smooth because there are a lot of actions that you can do, but they are all so streamlined. The whole game is so extremely streamlined. It's, it, it's really unbelievable. Okay, I think again, maybe one last thing we should have a look at are those expedition cards because they also provide you end game scoring points. So this here, for example, is a zoo on the right hand side. You always see a museum piece and you want to make sure that those, um, let's say, animals and or museum pieces are visited at the end of the game. So in this case, you need an investor and in this case, you need a craftsman in order to do that. You can only use those um, meeples here, not really meeples, those worker cubes here, once per each of those things. But let's say you have three of those cards and you are able to map those with population cubes from your home island, then you will score the points that are printed here on the bottom here. Three points for the scorpion and one point for this antique book. That's how those work. Yeah, you can score some points, but Usually, again, I would say the population cards are your main driving force in respect to victory points. Okay, I think with that being said, let's get right into the game. So each player starts the game with his home island here and with some pre-printed um, industries here for once. Um, and those are your, basically the houses. This is your yeah, district where your people are living. Here we have the shipyards and in the last row we have your ships. We have trade ships and we have I think expedition kind of ships. Um, yeah they have these sabers here but it, it's really relatively peaceful game so there's no direct conflict going on. I could imagine maybe in an expansion or so that this is something that they might integrate but for now it's again a relatively peaceful game I would say. And those ships simply provide you some of those trade tokens here and some of those, I think, expedition um, or discovery tokens that you later on will need in order to explore new parts in the new world or make some ties with the old world here. As part of setup, each player has drawn nine cards and seven of those cards are those farmer and I think worker cards. So those are the very basic cards. They are a little bit easier to get on the table. And we also have drawn two of those um, engineer, craftsman and investor cards. Those bring you eight points at the end of the game, but of course are also more difficult to bring to the table. And um, the amount of cards simply goes hand in hand with the amount of cubes we start the game with. So we have four farmers, three of those craftsmen and two of those, no, three of those workers and two of those craftsmen here. And that's why basically we have seven cards for these blue and um, green 
cubes here and we do have drawn two cards for the red one here but those cards basically do apply to the um, engineers no to <laughs> <laughs> to the craftsmen, to the engineers, and to the investors. Apologies. The game comes with this nice handy dandy little player overview right now that's in German, obviously. So, um, but it really tells you what actions you can do. This really sounds like a lot, but again, each of those actions is extremely simple to do actually if yeah there are some rules in respect to trade there are some rules in respect to the shift and for example how you can build stuff but apart from that it's really 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 a very very straightforward game but on the other hand it's also so deep in respect to your decision making processes and really all goes back to those order or mission cards here which you want to achieve so in this case really we want to make sure we have a lot of engineers at the end of the game or here we want to make sure we get those industries here or we want to have uh, basically a trade fleet at our disposal which gives us a lot of stuff and on top of this your early strategy is being driven by the cards that you have drawn so here this for example this i don't know sailor or so he simply requires some booze <laughs> i don't know it's gin or me i think it's gin maybe vodka i don't know and wants some of those simple clothes and then i would be able to build those right now we don't have those yet but we can build those two industries here so we have the resources that are required for those industries here for booze we need potatoes and we need coal for the clothing we need the thread or the yarn here and also coal and there is also some coal a more cheaper coal up there so one thing that's also not a bad thing is to really early invest into your supporting technology like wood like steel like coal you all have those technologies right now on your player board but in respect to the cost of your workforce, right now they are more expensive. So the coal here needs a red worker to activate. And again, a red worker is more powerful than a blue worker here, for example, and also more expensive, for example. So in theory, if you invest early, you could replace this coal piece with this coal piece here, and then you can activate it with a blue worker, with a standard worker in this case, a blue cube here, for example. Um, the same is true for wood. So usually you need a farmer for wood. Later on you can say, ah, I want my farmers for this, but I want some more plow here. So here it's getting more expensive, for example, to build over uh, or to build this industry here or to build the wood, for example, to get the wood. But maybe you really don't have a lot of green workers here. On the other hand, you can also overbuild uh, basically or you can build another technology of the same kind into your industry as long as they're requiring different kind of workers and this is something that's i think wrong in the german version of the rules and cosmos already reached out because the rules say you have to overbuild this industry once you build it but that's not the case because again they require two different kind of workers and from what i understand now this is now allowed to have two of the same industries in your district as long as they are requiring different kind of workers in this case but i think i'm not too i don't fancy wood too much at this point in time i think let's stay on target and i guess we either want to go for the booze or for the clothing here clothing can be also interesting for some others but i think we really need the booze too actually for our other cards so this is really something that you have to check at all times what's important for you so i guess we want to build this industry here now in order to do that we need to come up with some potatoes and we need to come up with some coal and here is how your industries come into the picture you're not really producing the resources. So let's say if I produce potatoes, there is no counter for potatoes. Everything that you do is pretty much near time kind of a, it really, they have a very fast supply chain, it seems at 1800. But again, in order to build this booze industry here, we need to come up with one potato. This is here, so we can place a worker, a farmer onto this space here. So now we virtually have produced one potato and we also need some coal. And right now coal needs a red um, craftsman here, which is relatively expensive for a basic resource like this. But this was our coal. So now we have virtually produced those resources. There's nothing that can spill over into the next round or whatnot. You have to use it right away. The only real resource that we have is actually gold. Um, here we have the starting player and this is really nice. It comes two-sided so you can have a female and a male starting player. So I decided that this is now a female starting player. 
But apart, so we don't start with any gold, the others do. You get some golds when you trade, but I come to those things. And so we have now successfully produced this industries. We will flip it to the other side and you have to place it on a land um, space here. Um, these are coastal areas and the rules not specifically say that you can't build them there, but in the end, they're also land spaces. So but whatever I place in here, I can no longer put um, shipyards on there unless I decide to get rid of this industry, which is always allowed. So you can always overbuild your industries if you want to do that. On the last row here, obviously, you can only ever place your ships. And later on, there are possibilities to extend your homeland for sure. But now we have access to booze and so have all our other competitors. So the other players can now also use our industry by trading with us. But that was already the very first turn of the starting play. And there are no player colors or whatnot, but this is simply player one here. So we are moving over to player two. Again, they have the same setup as player one. They start the game with one gold coin or one gold bar here because they are second, third player will get two and so on. They also got their set of nine cards. I really hope I didn't miss that. This seems about right. And they also have to make a call now. What do they want to produce right now? Of course, they can also explore. They can go for those uh, exploration cards here, for example. But again, getting some of the core industries early is definitely important. And now player two already kind of panicked because he saw that player one took the booze away. So I think they want to do exactly the same thing because they know there are only two of those industries left. When once you overbuild an industry, they go back to the main game board. But right now, what's gone is gone. So I think they also want to do the same thing here. So they will go for the potato and they will also go for the coal. And this simply gives them the boost industry. And again, I'm doing this because I have seen the cards of player two here too. So they might as well have two or three or maybe even more cards um, of those population cards that really require boost. So they really want to make sure to have the boost on their own so they don't have to keep trading all the time with the other players. Again, trading is not the end of the world. And sometimes you really prefer to trade rather than go for an extremely expensive industry. But I think in this case, that's the best deal for player two. And then that's already the turn. But player three is obviously okay with that. Again, they also have those nine cards. They have two gold pieces because they are third. But again, they are not really too concerned about this. So I guess they want to produce some clothing instead. So I think they want to go for this yarn here. And they also want to go or they need coal for that. On the other hand, he could now also decide, hmm, Maybe I really have a lot of those cards that require coal or for later stuff that requires coal. But given the order cards I have seen, maybe coal is not the worst thing in the world right now. So I think we will stay on target here and we'll go for this working close here again. This is the yarn and this is the coal. We build it. It's here basically end of um, action. And there are no real game rounds in this game. Again, this is something I mentioned in some of my other videos too, that there are recently a lot of those games that do not really have game rounds um, as a definition. They simply flow along very nicely until the end of game is being triggered. And that's the same here. So you take your action, you do stuff. Yeah, there is some kind of passing when you really want to or want, need your workers back desperately, for example. But apart from that, there is no end of round cleanup or whatnot. You simply play the game until the game ends and then you tally up your score. And this is really, I like this a lot because it makes a game move very, very quickly and you really feel engaged in whatnot. I really like that a lot. Also in Bonfire, for example, you simply play the game until it's over. It's really, really great. But yeah, back to the first player who now panics on herself because um, she also wants the clothing here because she has two cards that need those clothing. Of course, again, she could trade with the other player, but right now she could afford to go for it because the next time she's going for that, she could produce right away this card here. And this could be three cards and this would give her three more of those trade tokens. And keep in mind, at the end of the game, you want to have the most of those trade tokens here. Of course, you can decide to spend them anytime, but if you don't have have to, they can give you 10 points, which is definitely a big deal in this game. Not huge, but still significant enough. So I think, yeah, let's also stay on target here. 
and go for the clothing industry, right? So again, we need the yarn, which is another farmer, which is okay. We need more coal. So now all, both of those coal spaces are blocked, which is kind of a bummer, but yeah, that's life. So we have used all our workers in respect or the craftsmen in that perspective, and we don't have any more coal, but that's okay. We have basically built our second industry here, which is the closing industry. And again, with our next action, we can then go and produce or basically train or whatever, lure this into our homeland here, the sailor, and yeah, give him some clothes and um, something to drink. That's all he needs, it seems. I guess player two wants sausage. In order to get that, we need to activate our um, pig industry, our pig farms, and again, we need some coal. So let's quickly activate it. So let's bring it down here. We need some pigs, the pig farm, and again, we need some coal, really still expensive coal. Again, keep in mind, we have this blue coal up here, which you can activate with a blue worker, where we still have a lot of those, but right now, none of the players went for it. I didn't, I will, really I haven't seen this. Usually one player really goes for this cheap coal relatively soon actually but apparently those two players are not doing this okay so we have activated those industries which means we have now built this industry into our homeland area here home island so now we have booze and we have the sausage here which is great over to player three and i think for them it's time to build or train their first card or play their first card so they want to play this card here nice fellow so he wants some clothing, so we have to produce clothing here. Not a problem, we can do that. Then we also require our um, steel. Right now we only have, the, let's say, the expensive steel. So we really need a high level of specialization in order to do that. And again, later on, if we invest into steel, there is a also a quote-unquote cheaper steel industry available. We can then, if we train our people, autom automate a lot of our processes, then we can also go for the more untrained um, forces in our workforce here. But right now, that's what we have to activate. The clothing and the steel, which now allowed us to play this card. So we put it onto the table and any time during your turn, you can activate any amount of your workers pretty much for free as a basically free action. And I think right now there is no reason not to do that. So in this case, when we activate him, we, he gives us four more gold coins, which is really huge. Then we are flipping him to the other side, meaning we have just scored our first three points. No, the three points are also here, even if you're not using him. But in this case, we have activated the card. So in theory, we can more or less forget about this. Back to player one. And again, we want to train this sailor here. So we also need to activate our clothing industry. And again, he wants some booze. So we can get it relatively inexpensive with some untrained workers here. We were able to build this guy here. This one is now a little bit um, interesting um, because when you activate him, you get three of those trade tokens here. The problem with those trade tokens, this is where you really have to be very, very careful, is when you activate the cards, you have those tokens, but they only last until you really decide to pass, I think, go on a holiday or whatever it's called in this year. And this simply means to put all your workers back. But this also then means when you have still um, trade tokens on your cards like this, they also disappear. So you really want to wait either, it's say it's too early right now to keep him for the end game scoring, or it's also important, maybe you want to use him in order because those trade tokens can be extremely valuable. But right now, I think we don't need to activate because we still have some trade tokens down here, which we can use. And again, we can might as well wait until we really do want to trade. But again, he will score us three points towards the end of the game anyway. So we can simply keep him here. And then we are moving back to player two who wants to play this card here. That's why he wants some sausage. This is this down here and also wants some booze. He seems like to be an artist. No, I think he's also a sailor, I guess. And I guess he wants to activate this card right away because this simply gives him an additional craftsman and those are really extremely, extremely powerful. So they, this new craftsman goes into this district here and because we just added some more population to our home island, so we are flipping this to the other side, seeing it's activated, we also have to draw another card. And again, you see that now. Usually this is the end game trigger when you're running out of your hand cards, but you keep adding those cards. Um, but 
but it's also fine. I mean, you want to score points at some point in time. And yeah, they all come with different kind of effects. There are really not a ton of different effects, but at least, I don't know, seven, eight or nine different kind of things that you can get from those cards. There are also some effects which allow you to basically discard up to two cards from your hand, for example. If you really want to speed up the game, that's also a fair strategy. If you really have the feeling, hey, I'm doing okay, let's try to end the game right now because for the other players are doing crazy stuff let's try to end the game early for example but that was already the turn of player two and it seems player three was kind of lucky to some extent but i guess right now it's a good time to really show you the trade mechanism in this game he doesn't have any problems producing this um shirt here or this this clothing here so let's do that so this is basically 50% of that card produced. He doesn't have any of those boosts and there is no industry left on the name, main game board. So he has to make a call now if he wants to trade. And I think we do want to trade. And now you're usually checking, okay, who's in a better position, who has this industry? Of course, you can only trade with someone who has the industry. And in this case, that's player one and player two. And then you check, okay, who has played the most cards, who has the most amount of gold. In this case, because of setup, uh, player three knows, player two already has a gold piece. So I think, yeah, let's trade with a starting player in this case because she has this industry here accordingly. And in order to trade with another player, you now have to spend your trade tokens. Keep in mind, all the players start with two of those trade tokens on their ships. You get them back when you take your, again, it's a holiday or some sort, basically when you're passing, um, then you get all your workers back and then you also gain those um, trade tokens back. But in order to see how many trade tokens you have to spend, you have to check which kind of worker is being needed to activate the industry. In this case, boost requires a blue cube. And when you check the player board here, you see that a blue cube requires one trade tokens to get activated. So in this case, player three spends one of his trade tokens in order to trade with the uh, player one's industry. You don't need to block the space. You don't have to activate any workers. You simply so you go for a trade, which means Player three has now tr successfully traded this boost here, which also means he has played this card. Again, he will activate the card right away, getting four more coins. But of course, because we traded with player one, um, they also get entitled to one gold piece. No matter how many resources you trade, you get one gold piece. Keep in mind, you can only ever trade one of the same resources in any given turn. So let's say for whatever reason you needed two potatoes, I think that's not good, never gonna happen i haven't seen this actually then you wouldn't be allowed to trade with both of those and you can also not trade with yourself obviously but again in this case blair one just scored her first gold coin which is good and three gold co gold coins or gold bar bars are also worth one victory point at the end of the game and yeah usually they're extremely helpful when you want to um, reactivate some of your workers without taking a full pass action for example but i'm pretty sure i will come to that too but yeah that was already the action of player three so we you have already seen a lot of those actions so let's move back to player one and i think right now it might be a good idea to really start to explore we have one of those exploration tokens here from our warships or whatever those are so we can definitely go for an exploration and the very first exploration that you do for the old world or the new world costs you one of those tokens the second two and three and four you get the idea um, and you can never have more than four of those and four of those this is the new world this is the old world and again this cost basically uh, is for each of the different categories um, distinctively. So this is basically the first one here costs you one, the first one here costs you one, the second one here costs you two and so on. So it's really not cumulative in this design side. You now have to really make a choice if you want to go for the old world or for the new world. Also depending a little bit on the mission cards or order cards that are out there, so these end game scoring cards, this might drive your decision a little bit. In this case, I guess Yes, we want to go for the old world here, which now means he has to spend his exploration token here like so. And then we are basically drawing one of those huge tiles here, flip it to the other side 
and place it next to our player board here. And at some point in time, you really need some table space. It's not really an awful lot, but you definitely need at least some table space. So I might really run out of table space in my little basement studio here. But for now, we are okay. I'm not doing a full playthrough anyway, so I think I should be okay. This was a card he hasn't activated yet, but he played it. And all of those, let's say, old um, world kind of extensions are basically provide you one sometimes immediate bonus. In this case, we have a new steel industry in our city and it's a much cheaper steel industry. So our standard steel industry costs you a red worker, but this one only need, requires a blue worker. So I think that's never a bad thing. I think you can get some exploration cards. You can get some ships, for example, a shipyard. So there are definitely a whole lot of different um, kind of rewards that you can get here. But that's okay. We have extended our home island, so we have more building spaces here for ships and for industries. So I think overall that wasn't definitely a bad decision. Moving back to player two, I think he wants to focus on some more of those cards. So I think he wants some bread first or the beer. Let me quickly check the cards again. What's more important, beer or bread? No, I think bread for now is the more important one. So I think, yeah, let's go for the bread industry here. So let's see, we need some grain, that's a green cube obviously, and again we need some coal, that's another red stone, which is kind of a bummer, but we have now successfully built our bread industry. And slowly but steadily we are really running out of cubes, so at some point in time we really have to make, oops, you didn't, shouldn't see that guys, sorry for that, so you might have already an idea what he's up to do. But that's okay. Again, it's, it's really okay. Sometimes you really want to keep those things secret from the other players just to make sure they're not snagging away the industry you need or maybe overbuilding an industry. This is really a very strategic element of the game to decide at which point in time you're getting the industry to either make sure you're getting some gold early on from the other players because they need to trade with you or to make sure they cannot trade with you and put it back so they cannot get the important resource or industry they are going to build. But again, that was the turn of player two. And then it's player three who really has an awful lot of gold bars. So in theory, he could spend those gold bars now to send some of his workers back before he's going for a passing turn. And maybe that's what he should do actually, because we, I think we should be okay, right? We have the blue later on here. I think we should be okay, actually. Um, yeah, I guess we are going for Sausage 2. Oh, yeah, we don't have any trade tokens left. So I think we want to go for the Sausage Industry, which means we need to activate this farm here, the pig farm, and then we need coal. The problem is we have, or oh, good thing is we have space for the worker. Problem is we don't have a red worker in this case. So what we can do now is to spend gold in order to call for a shift end for some of our workers. So we can basically move them back. Of course, we could say let's pass and then we move back and we get everything back. But I think right now he doesn't have to because you really want to use your gold too, because right now they're not really an end game scoring or whatever. So I guess Let's not um, pass too soon. As long as we have actions, we should follow up on those. And he still has a very cool card in his hand. So I guess, yeah, let's go for a shift and which means we are taking one of those guys back. Doesn't really matter too much who we are going for. And the price that we have to pay, so basically we are now paying the salary, is also printed here on this player board. So this is the trade value. So how, much, how many of those trade tokens another player has to spend in order to trade with an industry that requires a red worker on our home island or how many gold we have to spend in order to move a red dude back here to the home. In this case, that's three, which is definitely a lot. It's really a lot. So we just gave back one victory point. But again, that's still okay. There are tons of opportunities getting gold in this game, sometimes at least. So I think he's okay with that. So we have basically reactivated the red um, craftsman here. 
So we can send it back to the coal mine here and we already have activated this one and this allows us to build this sausage industry here too. Nicely done. And in theory, you can do this how often you want, how often you can pay those. So in theory, I could immediately move him back, for example. But right now, I think we don't have to do that. Back to player one who just noticed that she made a slight mistake here. I think we shouldn't have gone for the old world. I think we really should have gone for the new world. And the reason for that is she really has this extremely powerful card in her hand. So if she plays this card here, she gets an engineer right off the bat. In order to get this card on the table, she needs some bread. That's not a problem, but she also needs some cloth. The problem is in order to get cloth, you need cotton and cotton is only available in the new world. And you really have to be extremely lucky to get the resource here. The a further problem is, let's say another player has cotton because he dealt with a new world. You cannot trade with a new world directly for another player. Of course, if this player then would also build the cloth, then again, you could trade with that player. But in this case, I think that was kind of stupid. But obviously, I'm not taking things back again. After all, I'm not doing a full playthrough here. But if I would really play her, I would be pretty mad with myself, actually, when I would do that in an actual game of Anno 1800. Okay, what else can she do? I think it's still also too early for her to pass. So I think we want to go for the much better coal, I guess. Yeah, why not? So we will go for this new upgraded coal industry with automation or whatever this means. Therefore, we need some wood, which is not a problem. We will flip it to the other side. So in theory, we could overbuild it or could also place it into our home island here. But in this case, I guess, yeah, it doesn't really matter too much, actually. But yeah, sooner or later, we will run out of space anyway. So I think let's overbuild. These guys simply go next to our game board. And whenever we take, uh, I don't know, this shift and what I just did with player three or when we take this holiday or whatever, then they're also moving back to those. So we are not losing those guys. But for now, we have a new industry and we can in theory use it. I mean, we have a blue worker left. So I think that was still good enough for her. And then it's back to play it too. He really has, I mean, you have seen this card, this awesome card here he wants to play. Um, he has the Brad and he has the worker for that. It's not a problem. Um, problem is we have beer. In theory, could build beer, but beer... We can also build half of the beer with its grain or whatever it is, uh, but or wheat. And I guess we need coal. We could also send someone back, but we only have one gold bar here. So we cannot take this back here either. So I think in this case, hmm, we might not be able to play this. On the other hand, we could also go for some cheap coal here too. Or could prepare something else. I mean, we still have some options, actually. And who? Ah, that's interesting. Now, we could bring out a new card, but that card is not extremely useful to us. I would really rather stay on target right now. But on the other hand, if before we pass, we should really do some meaningful stuff. So let's not do that. So I guess we want to play this um, here. I don't know who he is, but that's obviously a new farming family that will enter. We have the bread, that's not a problem, but we don't have the clothing here. And we already know the drill. We have to spend one of our trade tokens here because we know clothing is a blue kind of industry and this is only one trade token we have to spend. Again, we have to trade with player one. Although, no, both of the players have that. But yeah, I think player three already still has seven gold bars. So I think let's again deal with player two she gets her second gold bar so that's definitely nicely done but again we have produced the bread we have traded the cloth so we have built or played this card i think let's activate it right away therefore we get two more of those farmers here they don't really do us anything good immediately um, but maybe for later on, it's still three points. That's okay. But we have used this card and that's already the end of player two's turn. Player three is doing quite okay, I would say. I guess he should be able to play this card, which gives him an engineer right away. And keep in mind, we have the university. 
So whoever has the most engineers at the end of the game gets 10 points and the ties are friendly. So really getting those purple cubes can be really huge. So we need a sausage. That's not a problem. We have the sausage. We need some brick. We don't have red workers here. But again, we are spending three of our gold bars to bring one red worker back. Then the red worker is moving down to the brick, which now activates this card or basically we allow to play this card. I think, yeah, let's definitely activate it right off the bat. So we are flipping this to the other side. That's three more points. We have now and I think that's the first engineer of the game. Nicely done. But the investors here, those are really the heavy folks here. And on top of this, we have to draw one of those purple cards or red, purple and I don't know, cyan kind of card. It's not really blue, it's cyan. It's really a poor choice of colors actually in this game. And let me look at this and wow, she's insane. But all of those give you eight points at the end of the game. Again, that can be quite huge. Okay, that was player three. So we are moving back to player one and maybe she wants to go for another preparation turn, maybe getting some cheaper bricks because she still has two cards. I think that's not bad. Let's do that. So she will activate her more efficient coal industry in order to get a more efficient brick industry. How nice is that? On the other hand, you also have to make sure not to have only basically one color as your industry color in your homelet at the end of the game or at some point in time because then you're also running out of options. So you really usually want some spread here. So having some green, some blues and red, I think this works out to be okay. Unless later on you maybe get more and more blue workers, then you really want to consider maybe let's go also for more and more of those blue industries. But that's okay, that was player one. So move over to player two. And I guess right now, yeah, we have to do an exploration action, right? We still have one of those exploration tokens. Let's go for it. We will play it better for player two. I think again, we need some of those new world kind of resources. So we will deal with a new world here instead. So we flip it over. And those are the three industries that are now available to us. And again, here we're really slowly running out of table space. But let's have a quick look at those new industries. In order to get those resources, you cannot send any workers. No, you have to spend your trade tokens in order to get those. Unlike other things, you can um, activate those multiple times during your turn. Um, but usually it's also something that you're not doing that often. In theory, later on, you can produce more than one ship, for example, if you have happen to have more shipyards. And sometimes that's what you want to do, but it doesn't happen that often. But I think here, player two was really happy. So we get some cotton, we have cocoa, I guess, and I think that's sugar cane. And again, if we are looking at our industries here, the red ones, and keep in mind, those red ones are in demand for endgame scoring, the coffee, the chocolate. I think that was okay. And also for this one here. So, and this seems to be rum, actually. It's not wine, it's rum. I see the sugar cane here. So in theory, player two could go for this rum because now he has the industry to deal with. That's okay. And we also got cocoa, so he could go for the chocolate. So that could be 12 points at the end of the game. I guess that's not bad at all. So I think he was kind of lucky. And whenever you explore or trade with a new world, you have to draw three of those new world cards. They give you five points, but apart from that really work exactly the same like the other cards. You can build those, they give you five points. And this is now really an effect which I told you about. This is an effect when you play this card, you really have to immediately choose if you want to use this action or not. Otherwise it's forfeited, but this allows you to bury two of your cards. They simply go out of your hand back to their respective piles and then yeah basically makes maybe the game end a little bit sooner than that and yeah she basically needs one trade token soap and some cloth and the others i don't show you but apart from that they simply go to the player's hand as normal i think that was pretty successful for player two so moving back to player three, uh, we still have this exploration token here. And I think we really should use because again, when we're passing all those tokens also go back. So we better want to 
expand it. We still have some spaces here, so we are not overly concerned about dealing with an old world. On the other hand, we could gain some nice bonus there too. But really, ah, yeah, we have only one of those end of game scoring cards. So do we want to trade early or not? Hmm. Ah, we really have space here. No, I think we want to spend Spend it and also will trade with uh, or explore the new world. So what did we get? Also coal. I think that's... Oh, what is this? Pretty sure these are coffee beans. Yeah, these are coffee beans. Uh, and I think this is milk or so. I think, is it milk? I have really... Sometimes I think it's so obvious. I'm pretty sure you're screaming at your screen. Hey, you stupid. Um, that's that. But um, I think it's milk actually whatever but we have found this i think that's okay i take it again for coffee we need coffee for one of our goals so that's still okay enough and therefore we also get to draw one two three of those new world cards there are exactly enough um cards in that deck um to basically satisfy all those new world um tiles here when they're gone they're gone and yeah usually this happens sooner or later but again depending a little bit on the industries you are after okay that was player three moving back to player one and i think now it's really time to go for this i don't know holiday so everyone simply goes back to their living quarters we don't have to pay those guys i think that's really important distinction you only pay those guys when you really need them outside of this holiday this trade token goes back. We haven't used this, so we can hold on to that. But that's already the end of her turn. So that's why you really don't want to pass too often. Sometimes it's not really that big of a deal because nothing is happening. But sometimes you really after one particular industry. And yeah, if you're really letting this opportunity pass, it's gone. I think player two is not passing yet because we could go for this rum here if I recall that correctly we should be good again we need sugar cane that's this one here we have to exhaust one of our trade tokens for that so we have that we need some wood in order to make the barrel that's not a problem so we have built this one and if we keep it until the end of the game it's our choice no one can take it away from us but it's our choice that's six points that's really huge but now we really have run out of all of our normal spaces so either we are now exploring into the old world or we are overbuilding something else but i think this is definitely the one we want to hold on to but i guess that was okay um i think with his next action he might as well pass too and even though we still have this purple guy here uh, can we do something with this purple or do we have something else to do this is a huge card actually can we play this no we can't hmm yeah, he really has a lot of cool cards, but I think, hmm, what are the new ones here? I nearly missed those. Maybe this will change stuff. Oh, that's a cool one too. Ooh, how do we get this? Oh, I want this. I want this for sure. But I guess hmm, it's kind of wasteful, but I don't want to spend any more gold right now because everyone else passed. I think the risk is relatively low right now, so I think they will also go for a holiday so they will all move back to their homes we will get those tokens back here too and that's already the end of this player's turn player one is really still mad with me that i didn't really properly go for this card here uh, the problem is both of the other players have dealt with the new world and they both were lucky enough to find cotton not on all of those are cotton obviously so even though if we are now going there we might not get the cotton we need but i think we should take the risk anyway yeah we have to so we are spending our exploration token here keep in mind the first one also only ever costs us one no matter if it's left or right in this case we are going for this exploration card and we were lucky it's cotton it's cotton maybe i'm wrong and maybe they all come with i think i have to place it like this which, which works fine too but i will take it anyway so she will also get three of those cards and here we can really have a quick look at those so what did we get this gives us an extra turn and that's okay we need this bike this nice looking bike here 
Oh, that's cool. That will fit our um, strategy. And when we activate her, we get two of those um, expedition cards, which is nice. They can also score us some points. And last but not least, oh, another one. And also one, some close, but also this gramophone here. Okay, that's, I think that wasn't a particularly bad draw, actually. I'm quite happy with that. And by the way, you don't get uh, any penalties by the end of the game for, for cards you have left in the hand. Would be very nice, actually. Interesting twist, <laughs> uh, though really makes you burn those cards uh, sooner, but it's not in this version of the game or without <laughs> any expansion. But okay, that was, that was a good exploration. We also found some tobacco, which we need for those cigars. And again, cigars are in demand by this Carl Leonard from Malching. So I think overall that was okay. Moving back to player two, I think, yeah, we have to pass with two of those farmers. I think there's really not a lot we can do, but he's already in a good shape because he has three of those uh, red cubes here. So that's good. We get those trade tokens back and also those exploration token. I think that wasn't bad at all. And then it's a rather magnificent turn for the player three. I think we want to go for this cannon because you need cannon later on to build your exploration ships and they give you exploration tokens, for example. So I guess that's not a bad thing and you make sure that someone will trade with you. I think overall that's definitely not a bad choice. Therefore, we need to activate one wares or goods here. We need some steel. So he's already running out of these red cubes. So it's incredibly expensive. We also have to exhaust our engineer here in order to do that so he's not going there but he simply expanded or used exhausted but we have successfully built this cannon here problem is we cannot activate it right away because we are out of red cubes but that's okay we will deal with that okay we want to have the cloth industry right so we want to trade with our colony here or with our new world i don't know so we have to expand one of our trade tokens here so virtually we just got some cotton in order to build this cloth piece here, we also need some wood, which is not a problem. We can activate it here. There is also a different kind of uh, cloth here when we go for the more automated variant here. So we, we then can go for the, let's say, untrained workers here, but we need this machine. But right now we don't have this machine. None of us has this machine, but that's okay. So we have traded our cotton. We have produced our wood here. So we have basically built this one here. We can place it in here so we can leave those shipyards here free and then with the next action we might be finally finally able to build this cart here nice the next turn for player two is quite simple because we really have to extend our home island here so we will spend our exploration token we will deal with the old world oh i think that's a nice one actually we immediately got two more blue workers. That's really huge. So we also get two more blue of blue cards. Um, they're okay, I guess. They're oh, they're really okay actually. They are pretty cool cards. Oh, you sh again, you shouldn't see those. Um, again, that was the action of the blue player. Keep in mind, or the second player. The next time we are going for this, we have to expand two of those token problems. We only have one here. So at some point in time, we really have to start using our ships. Back to player three. And I decided I need beer. In order to get beer, we need wheat. That's not a problem. We have farmers like there's no tomorrow. We, in theory, have coal. We could now spend three of our coin here or gold bars in order to reactivate. But I think let's not do that because we know there is some cheap coal here. So I think we might as well spend one of our trade token. Again, that's a blue industry. That's only one. That's one more gold bar for player one. But I really couldn't care less. And even though you have coal, you don't have to use your own industry. So in this case, it's basically totally fine to offshore some of these things, basically buying it externally cheaper from what you could do locally. I know it's really harsh, but yeah, I think that's life. That's modern day industry, actually, and modern day working life, uh, working reality. Uh, so we have basically virtually produced the coal. We have already produced the wheat. So we have now beer at our disposal. Nicely done. And yeah, I think now you have an idea how this game is actually moving along. There are some, let's say, little actions which I haven't shown you. But again, that's really not that big of a deal. I can go through those right now. 
So here, for example, I very briefly went over this. So whenever you, you can basically spend two of your exploration tokens, keep in mind right now, all the players only have one. You get more by getting more of those military ships here. Uh, but then you basically simply draw three of those cards and put them aside. And at the end of the game, you can trigger those. It's really you draw three cards. It's not draw three and pick one. It's three cards you get here. But those two things is really also not cheap. You can really do a lot of stuff with those because there are, for example, cards that can get activated with a lot of those tokens. That's eight points you get for this card for spending six of those tokens. And there are way more than those, for example. So I think that's why it's really not. And then those cards, they can give you between one or three points for each of those condition you meet. So maybe some, some of those can give you six points, uh, but those six points then need to be generated through investors and really getting investors is difficult. So that's the one action I didn't show you. The next action, which is actually quite powerful, can uh, allow you to upgrade your workers. So let's say you really want to make an engineer out of one of your craftsmen here. You see these little symbols here. So basically as your action, you can go for an upgrade. And I think you can upgrade up to three if I'm not mistaken yeah we can do that three times but we have to spend glass none of us has prop or, or windows uh, we have glass and there's windows so in order to build glass uh, windows you have to have glass none of us has it and on top of this we need to have some steel then we would basically get rid of this token and would gain a purple token for that because we haven't increased our population we're not getting a new card for that and it doesn't matter where this red cube is coming from for example the same is true for blue to red so we need to expand one coal and worn goods in order to make uh, let's say a craftsman out of this worker and here for this engineer you need to exhaust really exhaust one of your craftsmen and you need one of those fur coats here that really want the fancy stuff so that's the one thing that i really didn't show you sometimes you do these things upgrade but you can also directly build or train or acquire those workers by paying what's on top of these boxes. So let's say you simply want to go for an engineer straight off the bat. You don't have the cards, but you really want a purple cube. Then you can also spend um, these resources that are printed up here. In this case, you then, if you produce those, you get this cube. And then because you added population to your home miner, you're also getting one of those cards. And last but not least, if you're really, really, really unhappy with the cards you have, you can basically put up to three of your hand cards under their respective piles and draw replacement cards for those. So in this case, I'd say I don't want this card and I don't want these two cards. So these go in this case, I would draw two replacement cards from this deck and one replacement card from this deck. This can be also relevant relatively powerful at some point in time. You don't have to go for all three of those. Let's say you want to really get rid of two of those because you might have a combination, but not the exact right combination, for example. So that's also things that you can do in this game. But I believe in respect to the actions, that's more or less it. I mean, I believe I have shown you everything what's in the game more or less of course there is the end game scoring there are a hell of a lot of other technologies again there are a lot of extra cards a lot of extra of those especially those are mission cards for the end of the game again this will really make each game feel very very unique and we played this game now numerous times already enjoying the big deal um, but every time you really have to adapt it's not really a very strategic game of course you have some strategies for those goals but apart from that you really have to deal with what you have and this is something which i really enjoy in the game being able to make some some strategic decisions on the grand plan but also you need to deal with some more tactical things because things change for whatever reason these technologies or industries are no longer there you need them and you're also running out of your trade tokens and you could say okay maybe i need to focus more on trade ships for example to get the resources i need later on to get the highest scoring industries and whatnot and i think i also haven't really used those cards here this one here means as i said you have to spend one of your investors none of us has investors to gain five goals which is huge and there are also others of those in the deck so but apart from that i think you should have really a good idea or understanding of the game and yeah, that's pretty much how you play Anno 1800. I leave 
the components here for another one or two more days. So if you're really, really, really interested in um, seeing, uh, let's say, at least another episode of my little walkthrough of Anno 1800, just let me know, vote, give me a comment, thumbs up, whatever. Um, and I will consider that if there's really a strong demand or need that uh, you want to see more of this game, I'm totally happy to do at least one more episode of this one. If not, that's totally fine too. Again, overall, you really have seen most of the stuff here. Um, as I mentioned, it's really a great game, great fun to play it. Again, keep in mind, I got a free review copy for that. So <laughs> I say take it with a pinch of salt. Um, that's why I really will not go too much into deep into the the game here um there is no scoring block in this one cosmos promised to put something on the website it's not there yet but they're saying it will be there i'm pretty sure they simply ran out of their production schedule so they really wanted to get this out into the world before spiel digital also or right about time of spiel digital which is the reason i could imagine there is no scoring block in this one here but it will be there at least i hope usually i'm not a big fan of scoring blocks i really prefer standard approach and moving things around but at some point in time in the game you're really scoring a lot of points through these um population cards here so i think really a scoring block in this case makes more sense Apart from that, a huge shout out to all of my patrons out there. Really, really do appreciate your support. Um, if you want to support my show, you will find a link to my Patreon. Patreon, uh, you can support me directly here on YouTube by joining my community. Also like and subscribe. Everything helps. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.